Millstone from Festive Road, and today I'm in conversation with David McDonald from Hogan Lovells. David, welcome. Cool. Hello. Good to be here. <laughs> How are you doing? Uh, it's been quite a weekend, Paul, and it's uh, certainly uh, quite a, a world we're living in at the moment. Um, but like all of us, we are um, you know, thinking for the future. And yeah, because trying to just, get through it all. Despite your southern hemisphere accent, you're not based in the southern hemisphere. Where are you? Uh, I'm actually in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania, in the United States. Um, uh, so uh, that's where I currently live. I've been here for quite a few years, but of course, uh, you know, I lived in London, um, raised in New Zealand, so uh, most people typically know that. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us. We're going to talk about uh, preparing for the return back to travel and I um, really appreciate you sharing your journey so far. Um, can you tell us, first of all, which of the managed travel components are you going to talk about today and give us insights to? Sure. Uh, there was quite a few of the areas in the managed travel program, which I, I really like, but the one that I wanted to focus on particularly was engagement. Great. Um, so, so I chose engagement for a couple of reasons. Um, first and foremost, I think that you should always be engaging um, actively in your business, in your business strategy, um, with the people in your organization, uh, and that all those people that, that sit around you. Uh, but I think even more so now in, the time, in, the, in this time of great uncertainty, uh, I think it's really important for us to understand, you know, what's going on inside your organization, um, what's going on outside your organization, and, and really making sure that everyone is connecting all of the points and the dots together so that you, we can all work together on, on a, common, a common framework and a common direction. Okay. So to frame, though, we'll go a little bit deeper on engagement and what that means within the travel program and Hogan, Hogan levels, but sure. to frame uh, for the audience, wh where are you on the journey, that journey to pl plan for the return of travel? Well, I would say that, you know, that we, we certainly at the, be at the beginning of, of the COVID-19 virus, like many companies, we were involved in um, in a sort of a, a wait and watch process, right? So we wanted to get our people back from where they were. Uh, we wanted to advise them and continue to advise them on the ever-changing, ever-regular updates that we were getting on health, safety, uh, schedules, flight operations, hotels, all that kind of stuff. So that was kind of getting people to, to be in a safe place. Yeah. Um, many conversations have then taken place uh, regarding... Um, you know, what our organization is going to do. But as it relates to travel, uh, I would say that we're, we're, we're in, in really in the early stages of planning. I think that, um, and, and within that planning comes a whole element of things, but one of them is just really a s slow, careful, and steady consideration around what to do now, how to react when demand slowly returns, uh, because we don't think it's going to be a pendulum. And then also, how do we manage um, our, our, our travel requirements plus our people's expectations and what's available out there in the vendor marketplace um, carefully um, using all the necessary uh, protocols, protocols? Okay, great. So tell us a little bit more about um, why you chose engagement. I mean, I, I, obviously you've said that it's, it's incredibly important in the, in the most normal of times. When you're in a situation like this, it's vitally important. But can you give us some insights into how you go about, how you've gone about engagement internally within Hogan Levels? So very quickly, we formed, uh, led by our Chief Operating Officer, we formed a, let's call it a steering committee or a working group uh, that met initially, actually, every uh, twice a week. So part of that uh, was a cross-functional team from all around the world. Uh, we have 48 offices, 46, 48 offices around the world. Um, and we have certainly people in legal and those people who, who handle legal services and business services, so the support functions. So we, we created a cross-functional team led by um, our chief operating officer. And really what we did was we used that time to talk about what we're doing, what should we do, how are we going to approach things, um, how do we communicate with people, 
how do we identify the uh, the strengths of our organization, the risks inherent to the, to the virus? How do we keep people safe? And we and we did we did this on a regular basis, and we still continue to do so. So, um, in its in its exceptions, I would say probably around the beginning end of February, beginning of March, we started on this this whole sort of journey of internal communication and the out, the outcome of uh, each of these um, biweekly calls, shall we say, was a whole series of communication platforms that went out centrally to all staff globally, updating on, on health, updating on travel, updating on office open openings, updating on clients. Uh, it, was, it, it was and continues to be a regular uh, communication plan and a communication strategy that engaged multiple people regularly and then disseminated that information, usually driven by our chief operating officer, out to the organization to all levels. So it's that travel as featured as part of an overall mm. central communication rather than the travel team communicating independently with people. Correct. Yeah, okay. I, I think that um, with, with any level of communication and engagement, is it's it's there were so many things that were changing so quickly. Um, you know, first it was uh, the China ban, then it was what was going on in Northern Italy. Then between the United States and, and Europe, there was, there was flight banning. So then there was the UK and Europe and it, and it was all morphing very, very quickly. I think there is an element of um, sometimes too much information can drown people. Yes. So I, so I think it was, it was a very deliberate ploy to carefully um, make sure that the communication that we had to our organization was crafted, scripted, um, very informative and concise, but it, it added multi layers, right? So it had, it had clients, offices, people, travel and events, um, health and safety, risk, and everybody was involved. But it was, it was typically a, a standard communication that en encapsulated multiple areas within our organization. Okay. What, what other sorts of forms of engagement did you uh, start developing? I think you, you mentioned, I, I think, that to me that you, you had a dedicated epidemiologist. Is that right? Yes. So um, it, everybody gets that word right, wrong. Right? <laughs> so it's like epidemi, epidemi, epidemiologist. epidemiologist, right? So, so after, after a few weeks of us um, having a lot of information, of course, there's a lot of um, – there are a lot of people out there willing to give you a lot of information. So we felt that um, we being our leadership felt that we needed to get somebody on board uh, on an advisory capacity, just so that we could work with them to give uh, our people um, the ability to understand exactly what's happening from those people, from somebody who really knows what they're doing. So we, um, we, we got on board a, um, a medical doctor and, and, a, and an epidemiologist who had previously worked in senior roles as chief medical officer in the Food and Drug Administration to really come to us and run a series of workshops and Q&As. So people submitted questions, essentially questions, fears, concerns perhaps about what, about what was happening with the virus. And he, he has conducted a series of, of of town halls, of video presentations uh, to our organisation. I think it's I think it's really insightful. Um, it's it's very fact based, and what it does is it closes the noise that we hear from around the world and just focuses it on on an individual who's highly experienced in this field to provide the answers that our people want to want to hear. And you know the the feedback I believe has been really really positive. But what it does do is it's, it tells our it tells our people that that our firm cares about them, cares about the information that we present to them, and make sure that we keep them engaged and informed at all times. Great, it's a very effective way of getting people's attention, I think. And as you say, you always bring it back to the fact-based dialogue, which is really impressive. What, what um, apart from the engagement side, um, when it comes to communication. How, um, how far have you got in terms of revising policy and these sorts of components? So within, the, within the, the regular communication, we would always be adding certain um, 
lines, shall we say, in that communications or relates to travel and events that talks about the latest policy or the latest guide, guidance, guidance of travel. Um, what we hadn't previously done is we hadn't actually changed policy because we're really, we were really working on a, um, what are we going to do over the next two weeks or the next 30 days? Yeah. So essentially what we, we ended up doing was saying, current, the current status on, on travel or events for our firm is X, and that X policy will last until date in the future, usually 15 or 30 days out, and we will review and update that accordingly. So it was more, the, the policy itself was more, here's our travel policy, we know, we know what it is, but here's some guidelines about what we're doing at this point in time. So what we are, as we are slowly starting to get back to, um, as I said, in the planning phase, to get back to some kind of work, I, I truly believe that we will have activity in travel, right? We'll, we'll start with um, domestic travel. We'll start with, then we'll, then we'll move into sort of transborder travel. And then latterly, it'll be, you know, long haul travel um, as and when required. It'll typically start with client billable travel first, um, essential non-billable non legal lawyer travel, and then, and then everything else will fr filter out. So it's my intention to actually create, and I actually liked, uh, I think your, uh, your co-conspirator, Caroline, used the term pop-up policy, which yes. uh, last week, which I, I did actually like that term. So, so you know, I'm not going to steal it, but I'm, 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 I might sort of, in the terms of this, create a, a very brief pop-up policy, which says, okay, our policy is all of this, but, in, but for the next six months, these components have been adjusted accordingly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and there'll be, there'll be things Paul like, um, we'll, we'll be tightening up, you know, booking by the agency. Cause I think it's, I think it's even more imperative now. We'll tighten up things like, um, traveler awareness and advisory and guidance and acknowledgement on health, safety, precautions, um, information related to travel and a few other, and a few other things. Yes. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to make something change, but previously uh, it's really just been within the communication. Okay. If it helps, I think the, uh, the pop-up policy term may have been another travel manager, one of our clients that was oh, used okay. the term. So um, it's, it's their gift to us, to you, to everyone else who wants to use it. So, Well, um, whoever that may be, I, may I thank you, travel manager, <laughs> in the, in the, out there for that, uh, for that, uh, that, how, that expression. How lovely. Um, just tell us a little bit uh, before, we, before we close out on the, the external engagement. So you talked about in Internally, yeah. how have you spent much time focusing on that external engagement with suppliers? I have. Um, so, so most mostly, people who work in travel engage their suppliers when when they're doing uh, something commercial, right? So it's reviews, RFPs, um, you know, service delivery issues, uh, or, or then it's uh, service uh, recovery, right? Something went wrong. Help me doing something like this. So in this in this particular time where we are seeing low to no demand, I thought it was really important that we 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 need to show a, a great degree of commercial empathy because I think the airlines are, are hurting, the hotels are hurting, the ground transportation companies are hurting, the TMCs are hurting. So I think the, one of the most important things in this particular time that I wanted to do was make sure that I regularly connected with all of our primary suppliers, right? Understand what they're doing, understand, let them know what we're doing as a firm. Um, listen to, listen to the things that they are, they are concerned about, understand all of the things that they are planning to do to return back to some kind of operations in a secure, safe and, and, and trust, let's call it trust based manner. And I, and I, and, and, and sometimes, Paul, I just rang up people or I arranged calls or video calls just to get my, my key suppliers just so we could talk and they could feel like there's a, um, an empathetic voice that, that was their client or is their client at the end of the line, realizing that we're all in this together. So a combination of a variety of things, because I think that 
I mean, you've heard me say this before. Other people have said, I think that we're, travel is one big echo sphere or ecosystem where we all kind of need each other. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I think in this time, even more so, if we can communicate with our external vendors and suppliers that have been supporting with us, it really shows a great degree of um, connectivity and empathy. And I, th- and I think they appreciate it. And, and I certainly want to know what's going on with, my, with, with all of my suppliers. Uh, so so that's, they're the kind of things that we've been doing. Okay. I mean, I think it's, it's um, likely to be an incredibly valuable investment of time, not, not just for their benefit, but also for your benefit when things start to return as well, that you've had that continuous dialogue rather than, as you say, um, just waiting to the point until you need some sort of service to delivery. So as we, well, I mean, we, I mean, we are, I mean, we're, we're all people, right? Yeah. We have, we have, our, we have our jobs, we have our lives, we have our fears. Right? I think it's important that, that we, that we, we, we connect to the emotional side of, of, of the world that we live in sometimes. Yeah, okay. Um, so in terms of closing out, mm-hmm. is there any particular advice or guidance when it comes to engagement that you would give to travel managers watching, uh, watching this interview now? Sure. Um, I would say number one is obviously engage, right? I think, it, I think it's an important Communication is so important now in this time of uncertainty. So I would say engage, um, uh, engage in straight talk as well. I think it's really important that people feel that you have got some, you've got credibility, empathy, and, and you're not kind of like giving them some sort of wishy-washy tone um, because, I, because in this time it's, it's important that people feel that they can trust you um, that you're that you're that you're an honest and credible credible individual representing your organizations. Um, I think that don't drown people with too too much communication. I think that's a, that on the flip side of this. Um, make sure that that when you're speaking to your your internal customers, whether you're speaking to your your peers or your suppliers, make sure that you engage people in a way that says, "I'm here, I'm available." I'm knowledgeable, we're here to help, and we're all in this together. And I, th- and I think it'll serve you well as we, we swing back into the world of travel um, and we, we, we start to get some sort of normal business activity. Okay, fantastic. Great guidance. Thank you very much. Well, I want to thank you for engaging with us and um, giving us insights into the preparations that you're, uh, that you're taking because, you know, to your point, everybody's going through the same experience. So the more that we can uh, help each other, uh, the, more, um, the more valuable it is for everyone. So thank you very much for joining us today. Good to be, good to be here. Thanks, Paul. Okay, great. Um, So just to remind people, you can download our uh, complimentary permissible travel framework uh, from festive-road.com and uh, there'll be more interviews with other travel managers uh, giving insights on different parts of the managed travel model that they're working on to prepare for the return to travel. Um, And thank you very much for watching.